In this video, I'm going to show you how to make some timing tape to stick on your crankshaft pulley. Okay, so first of all, let's just discuss why you'd actually want to make timing tape. Um, on a classic mini, uh, the inspection port to see the markings on the flywheel, it's not really in a difficult position, but you have to use a mirror and a, a light to be able to light that up and see it. Um, and to make things a bit easier, um, you can stick some timing tape on the um, crankshaft pulley or the harmonic balancer. Um, that way you can determine what the timing is um, while the car is running. Um, you can shine the timing torch on it easily. So if I just show you on a car, in case you're not familiar with it, there's a little window here on the um, clutch cover. You need to remove that little window, use a mirror and a torch, shine in and then read the um, timing marks off the flywheel. So that's how you're meant to do it, that's the most accurate way. Okay so firstly this won't work with all um, crankshaft pulleys. Um, in this case here, this I believe this one is off a 998 Mini. Um, clearly this pulley you're not going to be able to stick the timing tape to it. Uh, I don't know if in this case here they have like a little notch uh, it's usually opposite that piece, but yeah, in this case here, you might be able to do something um, putting like white paint on the edges here, but still, that's not that effective, or it's a bit difficult to do. Um, in the case of a 1275 motor, um, you're likely to have a larger harmonic balancer, um, and then in that case, you've got this um, distance here which you could um, stick a piece of um, timing tape on there like that. Alright, so the first thing you need to do is actually measure the diameter of this um, harmonic balancer and the way you need to do that, I, I usually use something like one of these gauges to um, measure the distance um, and I'll, I believe it would be around 121 millimetres so if you hold one edge still and then just you'll feel it get tighter when it rubs and then that's pretty much the distance. So 121 millimetres and I've just got an, another older one here too and you probably find that these ones are all going to be a similar size. This one's a little bit smaller. So it depends on your um, actual harmonic balancer, you need to get like the most accurate reading you can um, as close as you can as possible. Okay, so fire up your computer and then I'll sort of show you what you need to do. So the first thing, open up an internet browser, um, just in a Google search, if you're typing um, timing tape generator, um, and then this first one here, blocklayer.com, that one is what I used. So open up that. Um, this particular website, it's got a whole heap of different things that it can generate um, templates for. So the particular one is timing tape. And then try and ignore all these ads. So the diameter, this is in millimeters. So the, that's the diameter of your pulley. I'll just see if I can make this a bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so diameter is the diameter of the your actual pulley, and in my case it's 121 millimeters. So these measurements are in millimeters. The width, uh, you want that as small as possible. Um, I don't think 10 centimeters. I don't think it will like that. I think the minimum is 15. Sorry, 15 millimeters. Um, and then you want to start. That's if you want to produce a circle. Um, I'll just leave all these settings as they are for now. Click on draw, and then you see down below here, that's what it actually generates. So what it produces is a timing strip. So in this case here, each of the increments is one degree. So if you were to stick that on the outside of a pulley, uh, it'll show the actual exact increments. Um, this here is just a ruler for you to, um, when, once you print it, to put a normal ruler against the page just to compare to make sure things are printed correctly. Um, and then down here is an actual circle that once that's printed you can 
you, you don't need to in this case, but you could print that, stick it on the end of the, the um, pulley just to see the increments all the way around up to 360 degrees. So in this case here, the only thing that we're interested in is the ruler and the actual piece of timing tape. So I just need to reduce the screen back to 100%. Uh, what I found easiest to do, you can right mouse click save these images, but what I found was easier to do is just, um, I press the print screen on a Windows computer, um, and then just go into paint, and then just paste that, but we just, we just wanna keep these two, so select those. Um, you only sort of need, we'll just go up to 100. So copy that, um, and then I'll just clean things up. I'll just do a new image. And then paste that. Now, what we want to do is just print print that out. So if I just go print preview, I'm using paint because that's every computer or Windows computer will have that. Um, print preview. So that's not how we want it, that's too big. So in the page setup, we just need to make sure scaling is set at 100%. That way it's gonna print out the normal size. Oh, there's me. Um, so it'll print out the normal size. So what you're seeing now is that the actual page, um, and then that is how we expect it to print. So I'm gonna print that out and then we can have a look and I'll just sort of show you what that turns out like. Okay, so here's our um, printed page. And the reason why you need to print this ruler too is to make sure that the um, scaling is correct. Because when you print things, it might be slightly larger, slightly smaller, depending on what it is. But um, in this case here, let's just compare that. So you can see in this case here that uh, it's pretty accurate. I mean, if that was a metre long, maybe it would slowly go out, but that's pretty accurate. So compare this bit here, that printed ruler to a normal ruler, then you'll know that this um, is accurate for the diameter of your um, pulley. So what we'll need to do now is cut this bit out um, and then get it stuck on the pulley. The other trick I wanted to explain too, um, to rotate the engine, um, just if you jack up the um, suspension so that this wheel is free off the ground, put the car into fourth gear, and then you can easily rotate the wheel to turn the engine over. Okay, so what I did, I uh, put a, a jack underneath the, um, the wheel, just on the driver's side, jack that up, put it into fourth gear, and then that way you can rotate the wheel and then it's easier to get the um, engine rotated to the correct position. So I, I found it hard to trim this with scissors, so I've just left it for now. So we wanna line up the zero, which is top dead center, with the, the line which I've got on there, the white line. And then once we've got that in position, let's check those other markings. Yeah, they're all um, five degree markings. Those, are those grooves that you can see here, they're five degrees. And that um, lines up nicely. Okay, so that's um, stuck on there now. Move the light so you can see it a bit better. And I've lined up zero on there with um, the white line that was on that pulley. So at the moment it's at, it could be at top dead center, it depends on what um, stroke it's on, but I'll just, it's just rotated there to the top so I can get it on there. I'm just gonna trim off that excess sticky tape with a razor blade. So in order to test this now, uh, you need to use a timing 
light. And the way this works, this um, pickup goes on to spark plug number one on the actual lead. Uh, in this particular one, there is an arrow on there. Uh, I don't believe that makes any difference, but anyway. The arrow, I'm guessing, points towards the spark plug. Um, and then you have a positive and negative that need to be just connected to power. So I'm going to get that directly just from the solenoid. And then we'll test it out. Yeah, it's pretty difficult to get this um, camera to um, record in there while that's um, running because um, the, the flashing of the timing light doesn't really um, pick up that well on the camera. Alright, so the advantage of this, so when, when the car's idling, it's around about 10 degrees before top dead centre and then with the vacuum advance on, revving it to about 4,000 revs, it's sort of like fr about 3, about, sorry, about 35 um, degrees before top dead center. So that's the advantage of having all these markers on there um, So it is it is useful it's just to see what that um, the vacuum advance you're getting out of that engine or for the settings So I've done some minor adjustments to the um, Distributor I sort of just um, retarded it slightly just to get that um, advance down a little bit All right, so I'll leave it there um, Hopefully you find this video useful and it probably applies to more cars other than just minis. So I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching my videos.